turned a split against the D-backs with one of their best all-around games this season. Tonight, they head to the Pacific Northwest to try to navigate their way past a red-hot Mariners crew who lead the American League with 15 wins in June. So lace up your gloves, get those hands ready. We're coming at you next, Indians and Mariners on Sports Time Ohio. The familiar sight of the Seattle Space Needle dots the landscape in downtown here in the Pacific Northwest. And it's the Indians and the Seattle Mariners tonight from Safeco Field. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. These two clubs are actually very similar. They've both been up and down a lot. They're both in third place in their respective divisions. Both teams six and a half games off the pace. And they both have dynamic hitters sitting right in the middle of their lineups. Yeah, when you look at the left-handers they have, they have the only two natural left-handed hitters in the top ten. For the Indians, it's Michael Brantley. He's had a, a spectacular year so far. He's hit for the long ball, a career high. He hits the ball everywhere you pitch him. He goes in, he goes away, he goes up the middle. He has been the best hitter for the Indians on the year. And on the other side of that coin, Robinson Cano, the big free agent signing, $242 million. This guy, he may not be hitting for home runs. He's not playing in Yankee Stadium, but this guy still has a sweet sway. He has always hit well against the Indians, and he also can use the whole field. So he's in that number three hole, and you can see his career average against the Tribe, a 342. Yeah, talking about number five and number six in the American League in batting average, and they'll be scoring off all weekend long here in Seattle. But pitching ultimately is the name of the game, especially in this ballpark. And when we come back, we'll preview tonight's pitching matchup as Trevor Bauer will till the rubber for the Tribe. That's straight ahead. Indians baseball is brought to you by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Panini's. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. 
and by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Back here in Seattle, beautiful afternoon. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. We'll be able to play with the roof open all night long here this evening. When you talk about pitching, you've got to pitch well against Seattle because normally they pitch well. Trevor Bauer gets to start for the Tribe tonight. He's been pitching much better. This is a great ballpark to pitch in. And for Trevor Bauer, he needs a win on the road. He's 0-5 in his career, 0-2 this year. But he's got a very good curveball. If he can command the fastball and keep it down, this is not a good ballpark to hit home runs in if you're a hitter. And the Indians are looking to get them started on the right foot here this weekend against Seattle. And as you mentioned, you do need good pitching. He's matched up against Chris Young, a 6-foot, 10-inch right-hander that is having a nice year for them. He'll throw anything at any time. He is 4-1 at home, so he's looking forward to get them started off on the right foot. Not only do the Mariners have great starters, but their bullpen is outstanding as well. Seattle 35-5 and when they lead after seven innings. It's the Indians and the Seattle Mariners tonight from Safe Field. Trevor Bauer will take the ball for the Indians, and he'll see if he can get some support from the Indians' offense tonight as they open up this weekend series against the Mariners. The play-by-play is coming up next. Your Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic. Call today for an appointment today. And by the Northeast Ohio Ford dealers. It has turned out to be a beautiful evening here in Seattle. As the Indians and Mariners get ready for their three-game series. The last nine games here at Safeco Field played between these two clubs... Seattle has won six out of the nine. A year ago, however, the Indians went five and two against the Mariners. Seattle comes in with a bit of a momentum push. Well, Seattle has been playing good baseball. They did lose their last game uh, played before the off day yesterday to Boston by a final score of five to four, but they've still won seven of their last ten. Let's take a look at the starting lineup tonight for Terry Francona and the Tribe. It's brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne in the leadoff spot, followed by as Dribble Cabrera. Then it's Michael Brantley, fifth in the league in batting average. Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis, and Lonnie Chisinau occupy the middle. Jan Gomes with the seven-game hitting streak. Then Nick Swisher and David Murphy round it out. Our GMC starting pitcher will be Chris Young. He is 35 years old, making his 15th start. 
This man is six foot, ten inches tall, right-hander, and I'll tell you, he's pitched very well in this ballpark. He only gives up a 173 batting average to the opposition. He has only pitched one game against the Indians in his career. That came back August 17th in 2005 when he was with the Texas Rangers. He pitched eight scoreless inning and allowed two hits. That was back at Jacobs Field. Now progressive field. Let's set the defense for you. The Kia Indy or Mariners defense will be Ackley and left. Jones in center. Saunders is in right. It'll be Seager at third. Miller is at short. Cano at second. Morrison at first. Zanino will be doing the catching. That is the number one rated defense in the league as well. Doug Edding's going to call the balls and strikes this evening. Marvin Hudson at first. The crew chief, Brian Onora, is at second base. And Adam Hamari down at third. Roof is open. Really no breeze to speak of. Do have uh, clouds overhead. We had rain this morning, but this afternoon the sun came out. Made for a very pleasant afternoon here in Seattle. Especially when you come from Arizona where it's <laughs> yeah, we 110. Went from one extreme to the other. First pitch of the night from Chris Young is up high, ball one. I believe they said 63 degrees for a game time temperature. 66. All right, 66 yeah, it is. man, Tommy says 66, so... <laughs> Michael Bourne takes a strike. It's two and one. Chris Young's a guy that you can't sit on one pitch. He will throw the breaking ball, the changeup, the fastball at any time in the count. Close play at first as Logan Morrison hesitated, then decided to take it himself, and he had to slide in there. And his foot popped up on top of the bag, which... Could have made for a very awkward collision, but well, it did. Nobody was hurt. You watch where Bourne's feet uh, go when he tries to find first base. He sees he's going to have to try and beat it out, but as he's coming up, he did like a little pop-up slide. Well, he got out of the yeah, way. Sure I did. thought his foot was up above yeah. the base. One down now for his dribble, Cabrera. Cabrera trying to snap an 0 for 11. For, for Chris Young here, this, he's made seven starts. This is start number eight. But in six of his seven starts, he has allowed four hits or less in the starts in this ballpark, which is incredible. He has allowed 12 home runs, so you want to get somebody on there and maybe pop one to get out of here. Hit a two or three run home run. He doesn't allow, he doesn't bunch up many hits. Only 67 hits in his 86 and two thirds innings. Now the one two pitch. Well, and that, what he's doing is somewhat historical when you consider the opposition in the games here at Safeco Field are batting 173, the all time franchise mark. It's held by Randy Johnson, who held the opposition to a 176 average back in 1997. Another six foot ten inch, but that one was a left-hander. This is the right-hander, a left-hander who could run it up there in the mid to upper 90s yeah. too. Quite a contrast in Chris Young, who does not throw hard, but according to pitch coach, uh, pitching coach Rick Waits, he's a very fierce competitor, and he said he's a student of the game. He puts a lot of preparation into each start. And he strikes out Cabrera, two down. Great clip of the game from Wednesday. Michael Brantley got on top of one and set it out of there. Helping the Indians do an easy win over the Arizona Diamondbacks. Drive with Cruz to a 6-1 to one win. They split the two-game set, but Brantley, fifth in the American League in batting average. New career high in homers with a dozen 51 runs driven in. Ah! Two 
while not as big, the one guy that Chris Young somewhat reminds me of is Scott Ellerton, pitched for oh, the yeah. Indians. Big guy. Scotty was 6'8". Not overpowering, but knows how to pitch, really right. competes. I like that. That's that's a pretty good call. There's that high fastball you talked about. He'll like get to it run down. it up there and try to get you to chase after it. Right. You have to try and get it down. He'll get a lot of strikeouts with that uh, fastball up around the letters. And see if he changes eye level coming back with a changeup or something off speed. Doubled up with the fastball. Play. Chris Young had shoulder surgery. The thoracic outlet syndrome caused him to miss most of last year. But Lloyd McClendon said he has been a quote godsend for his club. They had injury problems at the end of spring training. He was released by the Nationals. And Seattle picked him up on March the 27th. Wow, right before opening day, huh? I mean, you, you talk opening about, day was the 31st of March. Talk about falling into your lap. Right. And this guy has come out. He's looking for his seventh win tonight. He went to spring training with the Nationals as a non-roster invitee. Understandable when you miss that kind of time and you've got shoulder problems. People aren't sure where you're at. Had to earn his way back, but boy, he has he ever. 2-2 line drive caught by Miller, and the Indians go 1-2-3. Now the Mariners come to bat when we come back. Clendon, his first year at the helm here in the Pacific Northwest. It's brought to you by Toyota. Andy Chavez will lead it off. He's DHing tonight. James Jones bats second, then Robinson Cano third. Kyle Seeger, he has been an Indians killer in his career. Logan Morrison fifth, then Mike Zanino. Michael Saunders. Start first time he will pitch. Against the Seattle Mariners. He has pitched against the uh, American League West before. This will be his uh, third start against the Western Division team. So we'll see what Trevor has to offer. Looking for his first win on the road. Let's set the Kia Indians defense behind Bauer. It'll be Brantley, Bourne, and Murphy in the outfield. Chisenhall, Cabrera, Kipnis, Santana on the infield with Gomes doing the catching. Trevor Bauer delivers. And it's a little bit high ball one. 
Chavez has hit in his last four games, going six for 12. Well, he's also, when he's in the leadoff spot, nine of 15 in his first plate appearance as a leadoff hitter, which is pretty darn good getting the offense going. Bauer in there with a strike, and the count is one and two. And the dirty lays off. James Jones waiting on deck. Two and two, the count on Chavez. Full kill. Get on the ground to short. Backhanded by Cabrera. Long throw. Can't get him. Chavez beats it out for an infield single. Yeah, you, you hit it that way, and if you can run a little bit, although he is in his 30s, he now starts it out. He is now 10 of 16 leading off a game in the leadoff spot, and this one is an infield single. That will bring up James Jones. Where's the old school stirrups? And he wears number 99 on his back. That's like bat boy material there. Ah! Bauer gets ahead with a fastball for strike one. Michael Bourne and makes the running catch. Scampering back to first as Chavez one away. Keys to the game brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital. Keep it under 10. When the Mariners get 10 or more hits, they are very good. A 23 and 4 record. The Indians, on the other hand, they get to five. When they score five or more, they're 26 and 5 this year. So a couple of key stats to keep in mind. When the Indians get 10 or more hits, they've gone 23 and 11 this year. Normally, you pilot that many hits, you're going to have some success offensively. At least you would hope so. Yeah. Well, I remember you mentioned that, uh, what, six out of nine, they've won to Seattle here in the last nine games. But the Indians have always come up here and seemed to play very well in this ballpark. Just in recent history, this series has really been dominated by the home team. All time, the ah. Indians have always played well in this particular building. At, at Safeco Field, the Indians are 35 and 27 since right. this facility opened in the middle of the 2000 season. Well, as a matter of fact, it's uh, 15 years ago today that uh, they played their last game in the Kingdom, which is where the football stadium is right now. Out the left field uh, above the bleachers. 15 years ago. There it is. That's the site of the old kingdom. Yeah. Now the football home of the Super Bowl champions. We were told that stat by Randy Adamak. We used to be a Cleveland Indians employee from Conneaut, Ohio. Back in the day in the 70s. Yeah. When we first, I first started. He's out here with the Seattle Mariners organization now. Rick, since 2012, so you're just talking about recent history. The home team in this series has won 12 out of the last 15 games. Okay. Two-one pitch. Cano went 
for a high fastball couldn't catch up to it. You remember a year ago the Indians swept a unbelievable series at home against the Mariners. Every game was oh, close. Third, yeah. Every game was four three, games. Six, three six. I think of the four was a walk off win by the yes. Indians. They played poor defense out there. They dropped a few balls giving them the opportunities late in the ball game. I do remember that series very well. Seattle had an opportunity to win every game and the Indians ended up winning every game. Chavez at first with one out and the 2-2 two -two to Cano. Runner goes to center field. Michael Bourne's right there to grab it. And again, Chavez will have to retreat two down. Up comes Kyle Seeger. Now it's funny. Usually when you talk about Safeco Field, you say what? Great pitcher's park. Tough to hit home runs in. Kyle Seeger has turned it into a hitter's paradise. He's batted 341 at home this year. While on the road, he's hitting a paltry 201. That's taking advantage of your home cooking. And as we showed you with our starting lineup graphic, he has always swung the bat well against the Indians. I remember, yeah, in his first start against him, he had a series where he just tore up the tribe. His very first time he ever faced him. And he's not a guy that you would look at and say, oh, man, you're a number four hitter. Well, in that the month lineup. of June, he's driving in the runs. He is he is saying, I am your number four hitter. Well, he's got 19 doubles. He's got 12 home runs and 54 RBIs. So and during the month of June, he's right there behind the chiz. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. And with two downs, Seeger awaits the 1 0 pitch. They really moved Chisholm Hall over to the shortstop spot. He was over there in the hole between short and third until he gets a strike. And now they figure that here's another left-hander in the game where they'll put three on the right side, make him try to pull the ball. And that happens a lot in baseball now. Now the 1-1 one -one upstairs. Rick, I think, like pitch counts, it's here to stay. I, I don't agree. think it's going away either. I don't. I agree with you. Until you know somebody proves that they're going to try and beat the shift and go the other way and change your your whole outlook on how you're going to hit the baseball. We see this every day, uh, a couple times a night with each team where they they put the shift on. Chavez takes off, but the ball was in the dirt. And Gomes really had no chance. Now Gomes has been throwing the ball very well, but he didn't have an opportunity. He had to pick this one. That was down in the zone and he just couldn't transfer it. That, that's not his fault. That's just uh, give Chavez a stolen base his first of the year. He just picked the right pitch. Chavez was called up May 30th. A 3 1 pitch. Base hit center field. What do you know? Kyle Seeger does it again, and the Mariners take the lead. His 55th run batted in on the year. And the man who has made a living beating up on Indians pitching continues. Does it again here in the first inning. Well, he had a 3 1 count, so the stolen base pays off now for the, the Mariners. With two outs, it was a 2-1 count. He stole the base, and there's a fastball right there to hit. He didn't hit it all that hard. Got enough of it. Loops it into center field. Drives in the run. So Seattle plays from in front. 1-0. Seattle on the year 26 and 10 when they score first. The exact same shift that they had for Sigger, they will use for Morrison as well. Now we look at how the Indians can sometimes be a very left-handed dominant lineup. 
Seattle with eight left handed bats and I'm talking pure no switch hitters eight left handed hitters in their starting lineup. Now the one one. Rick foul. Morrison a guy that's been playing very well. He hurt himself earlier in the year with a hamstring problem. Had to go down to triple A to work his way back. But recently has been doing a great job swinging the bat. Got his swing back. Seattle traded for him this past December. Acquiring Morrison from the Miami Marlins. Right handed pitcher Carter Caps. Morrison has terrific potential. He made his debut in 2010 with the Marlins and he hit 283 that year. Maybe the key for him is to. Find a way to stay on the field. He's had time on the DL three different times before this year. Isn't that funny? You find players like that that have a tough time staying out on the field, but you know if they can stay healthy, they seem to produce. Well, and this year he had the hamstring injury that just seemed to come out of nowhere. Then, when they finally called him up after about three or four games, he got frustrated after a game. He went in, he slammed yeah. his bat against the bat rack. A piece of the bat flew off. Cut him above the eyebrow. I needed stitches for that. He apologized to his teammates, his manager, the fans. Down the left field line. That is slicing out of play. The frustration, we all have it in any walk of life, regardless of whether you're playing baseball or not. You, you get frustrated. At, but if you could just stop before you do that stupid thing like punch a wall. Yeah, or, you live and learn. Mm -hmm. You live and learn. And it cost him five stitches, and he learned the hard way. How do you explain that to your wife, honey? Uh, what happened? Well, she, uh, <laughs> she was all over him because she said, "You, when you cut your eyebrow, that's not going to grow back right now." <laughs> uh, sometimes stupid things. Yeah, you learn the hard way. Runner goes. Two-two breaking ball. Bounce to first. Santana stays with it, and the inning is over. Mariners get a two-out RBI single from Kyle Seeger, and they lead it one to nothing after an inning.
on top, one to nothing. Hello. We're going to the second. <laughs> Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis, and Lonnie Chisenhall will bat for the tribe against Chris Someone Young. Just gave that guy a cue that he was on. <laughs> Santana will lead off as the Mariners go into their shift defensively, and he is batting 348 in the month of June with six home runs. So half of his home runs for the year have come in the month of June. He's also driven in nearly half of his runs for the season in the month of June. So what we're seeing from Carlos Santana certainly is a is better than what his career averages are. But you're also seeing that this is more akin to what you're used to seeing from Santana, not the aberration that was the first two months of the season. But it also, I think, points out, Rick, that whether you're a rookie or whether you're a guy that's had a few years in the big leagues, slumps are mysterious in terms of how long they last yeah. and how quickly you can get out of them. I truly am amazed that it took Santana so long to get out of his because he's normally a better hitter than that. But yes, he did. He went. And that's the second strikeout for Chris Young. One down here in the second inning. Well, can you uh, beat the best? Join millions of players now on the only official home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. Square off against your friends from around the world live in multiplayer derby mode and climb to the top of the leaderboards. Download today for free on the Apple App Store and Google Play. Ball one strike for Jason Kipnis. Kipnis has five hits in his last 12 at bats. He says, "Quote: I'm, I'm seeing the right pitches and I'm swinging at them. I'm just not necessarily making the kind of contact I'd like to." And for a strike, it's two and two. But it comes. It, it doesn't come all at once. It's a it's a gradual climb. He's starting to hit for you know in the last few games some doubles. When you hear players talk about slowing the game down, this this quote I think plays to that, Rick, and you'll appreciate this. Kip says, usually when I'm long through the strike zone, I have a lot of time to hit the ball. Now I'm only in the zone for a split second. So there's not a lot of time to make the contact. You got to be perfect. In other words, you got you got to be right there on the baseball. But oh, he, he was on that one. He was long through the zone right there. Hammers it into right field. He's headed for second base, and he'll go in sliding with a one-out double. You see, that's the thing that's starting to come for him now, Matt. Uh, the extra base hits, the doubles. He had that triple. He, uh, he was thrown out the plate in Arizona. But watch his his bat through the hitting area that time. See how quick he was through the hitting area. And he ends up uh, getting another double. That's number 12. So six hits in his last 13 at bats, and his last four hits have all gone for extra bases. I like it. And that's what comes. And don't worry, the long ball will follow because uh, they always come with good at bats. And, and, you know, Jason addressed that too. The media uh, asking about his. Maybe lack of power hitting lately. And he said, look, the oblique injury that I suffered has nothing to do with the power. The power is still there, but if you don't hit the ball, it can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's the first thing that people will think. You know, he's coming back from that, that rib injury, the, the oblique, or it's in your side. So it's taken, it's, it's taken away from your power. Pitch up high, but one ball, one strike. He's absolutely right. You get out there. If he's 100%, he's running well. You can turn. You can dive for balls. You can do yeah. anything. It shouldn't affect him. He's right. If you're not hitting the ball, you're just not going to. How can you get extra base hits if you're not hitting it? Lonnie Chisinau awaiting the 1-1. Fouls it straight back. See, that's the, the, the pitch. Chis is a, 
he's a good low ball hitter. He had a great swing at his two pitches here in this at bat, but they're a little high. He likes a ball down. If he can target that ball down a little bit, would be great. Third strikeout now for Chris Young, two down in the inning. Let's go downstairs to Katie with him. It, it, what does it look like for these guys when they're standing in? The, they look like Kareem Abdul Jabbar out there on the mound. Yeah, it does. It was interesting, Matt. You guys mentioned Chris Young 6'10 on the mound, but from the batter's box, the guy said it almost looks like he's pitching to you from the second deck. And because he's so tall, he has a hard time keeping the ball down in the zone. More often, it's going to live upstairs, as Rick mentioned. So he's going to induce a lot of pop ups. The key is to be picky, really make him work to get that ball down in the zone. Yeah, we haven't seen enough of that so far. Indians hitters have really been chasing the ball up. Out of the, maybe whether it's out of the strike zone or it's letter high. It's up. You can't swing if it's above the belt. Anytime I've watched this guy pitch, I see a lot of swings and misses from him up in the zone when he gets the two strikes. But now once he gets you swinging at that, that second time through, he can also go with that curveball or change up down in the zone and take you off of that fastball. So it's a nice mix. For the big man, only it's a lot slower when it's down in the zone. Jan Gomes with a hit in seven straight games. Tribe looking for a two out hit like the Mariners got to tie the game. Instead, it's a high fly ball to right field, playable for Michael Saunders. Chris Young works around the double. And we go to the bottom of the second, one nothing Seattle. We go now to the bottom half of the second inning. For Seattle, the lone right-handed bat in their lineup will lead it off. Mike Zanino. Zanino has hit in six straight games for the Mariners. And the 1 0 pitch is popped in the air, shallow right field, maybe. Yeah, just barely got off the skin of the infield as Santana has it. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Francisco Lindor suffering a somewhat serious injury, a small. 
non displaced nasal fracture on a bad hop ground ball. And he's going to be out about a week to 10 days. And he's already been tabbed to play in that futures game all star weekend. I, I don't know if that'll be in jeopardy. Not weekend, it's not a weekend, but during the week. I think they play that on Sunday night, don't they? Do Usually they? Usually heading into the all star okay. game, yeah. That kicks it off, I think, all star weekend. Michael Saunders activated from the disabled list in time to start tonight's game. But Saunders is a guy, you know, a bat they count on in their lineup. Justin Smoke, big bat that they've been counting on for their lineup. And Corey Hart, who they signed after some productive years in Milwaukee. All three of those guys have been hurt this year. And the Mariners feel like with the way they've played, the position that they've put themselves in, six and a half games out, they're five over the 500 mark. They feel like if they can get the pieces all back together, then they've got a chance to maybe make a run at this thing in the AL West. Well, yeah, there's a long way to go. The funny thing with Seattle, they played much better on the road than they have at home. 23 and 16 on the road. They're just two games under. They're 19 and 21 yeah. at home. Hard to figure, huh? It, well, it is, but they still, the thing that's going to keep them in all the games, and McClendon is their pitching and their defense. You know, if they get any kind of offense, they're going to win a lot of games. Well, Saunders, he's going to be welcomed back with open arms if he does more of this. A, a one-out double here in the second inning as he gapped one to right center. You know, let's look at the location. As, uh, that ball is right down Broadway. Right down the middle, and he took advantage of it. That's not a good two-strike pitch by Trevor Bauer, and he took advantage of it. So a one-out uh, double for Saunders. That's his seventh on the year. You know, for an offense, you, you talk about them. This is a Seattle team. They don't walk a lot. They're 13th in the league. They have 195 walks. They don't hit for a high average. As long as they can continue hitting with runners in scoring position, they'll be okay. One oh pitch. Dustin Ackley. Trying to shake out of an 0 for 12 slump at the plate. And the dirt 3 and 0. Justin Ackley was the second overall pick in the 2009 draft. But because he signed a major league contract right out of the gate, he only spent one year in the minors. Two on with only one out. And we'll step aside for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulowski. How do they get a 40 foot difference in? Who knows? It's Mike Trout. It's in the pond. It's in the stream. <laughs> yeah, Trout <laughs> likes the water. He likes he to may swim went upstream. upstream. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine hitter Brad Miller steps in. You look at his numbers there, 208, not very impressive, but he's batted 311 in the month of June. Power gets a hit. Yeah, June's been a good month for the Seattle Mariners. They played very well, 15 and 9 in the month of June. They pitched very well, 249 earned run average. Their bullpen, 164. They have been lights out. So actually, this turns into like a, a six inning game the way they're pitching. Bauer tags the bag for out number two. 
Saunders to third and Ackley to second base. Well, and Rick, that 15 and 9 record in the month of June. Is tied for the best record in the majors. Yeah. With Milwaukee of all teams. I mean, Milwaukee and Seattle. Best record in all of baseball in the month of June. Can't say I saw that one coming. Well, I, I, I think a lot of people would, would say the same thing. I don't think anybody had Milwaukee on their docket. Yeah, but the Brewers continue to show, hey, we're no flash in the pan. We're sticking around. The Brewers. Yes, they are. Well, began the day with a five and a half game lead over St. Louis in the NL Central. Down and in for ball one. Well, you got St. Louis there. You got Cincinnati. You got Pittsburgh trying to come around. So yeah. that is that's a surprise in that division. No question about it. Is there another division that has four teams over 500? Well, that's it, right? I would think yeah. so. 1-0 pitch. Pop back out of play. Chavez had an infield single his first time up. Yeah, that's the only team in the or only division in baseball with four of the five teams over 500. And the 1-1. One -one. In the air. Shallow left. Brantley was playing shallow, but out goes Cabrera. And he's make, making the catch to end the inning. Mariners strand a pair, and after two, Seattle won, Cleveland nothing. As we go to the third inning here at Safeco Field. Nick Swisher going to lead it off for Cleveland. And David Murphy. And Michael Bourne batting third this inning. Yeah, Nick not getting an opportunity in the two games we were in Arizona because the National League and the pitchers had to hit. He ended up having two pinch hit appearances but never got the start. So, and, and he's not happy about it, but well, he understands. So. But he understands. Look, Santana's swinging the bat extremely hot, so he's playing first. And Chisholm Hall. Chisholm Hall's. Wow. He hit a, him right in the back yeah. of the leg, and it just stopped. Bad break. At his feet. One away. Well, I was, we were just going to say that it's, it's the same thing, though. We're going to L.A. from here, so it's another National League team. So yeah. hopefully he'll mix in a few hits and get a start. He had a base hit here, except the big man. Knocks it down, man. That's like hitting it past the Jolly Green Giant on that mound. He knocked it down right in front and throws him out at first. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> that is. Look at the Green Giant. <laughs> oh, the kids 20 and under going, what? Yeah, I know it. I show my age nightly, don't I? <laughs> Pitch up high, ball one. You're I'm right laughing. there with you. You're though. laughing, I'm right though. There with you. <laughs> oh, 
man. David Murphy. Looks at the ball up high. Man, he has been trying to fight his way out of a prolonged slump. Just one for his last 36. Yeah, that is a prolonged slump. We watched him get hot, and, you know, we saw it early in the year. Magic hands take, takes a couple of swings to get him going. But he needs something to get him going in a positive direction. At the knees, a called strike. Nick Murphy draws a one-out walk. Well, that's what he did. He, when he got to the 3-0 count, he was going to make him throw three straight strikes, and he couldn't do it. Well, it's another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night Friday. It'll be July 4th. The Indians will take on the Kansas City Royals. It'll be Dollar Dogs all game long. And then after that game, they'll have a nice fireworks show. Go to Indians.com for your tickets. Born with a line drive base hit right field near the line. Murphy's going to go all the way to third. So the Indians have runners at the corners with one out here in the third inning as Michael Bourne has now hit in six consecutive games. Nine for his last 25 at the plate. And this has kind of been what we've seen from Michael Bourne, especially this year. You know, he had a, a horrendous uh, series against, I don't remember, was it Boston, I think? Yeah, when we were in Beantown, right. But then, you know, he'll turn it around and get red hot. Well, he, that's a big hit right there. You get him on the corner. He's got a six-game hitting streak. You remember the other night he struck out four times in, in Arizona the first night, came back and had back-to-back -back triples in the game, setting the tempo early for the Tribe. And this is a, a nice job here. It gives Cabrera an opportunity to tie the game up. Well, I talk about the ups and downs of, of Michael Bourne in that is very emblematic of the Indians as a team overall. The Indians have had five different losing streaks this year of four games or more. But they've also had three different winning streaks of four games or more, including a stretch where they won nine out of ten and seven out of ten. And you look at Seattle and they're very similar and both teams you always say you're looking for a level of consistency, but there are different reasons for why each of these teams have been inconsistent. Foul back. You know, for the Indians, I think you look at defensively, they haven't played as well as they would like to. Too many unearned runs and not consistent starting pitching, I think. Mariners, and on the other hand, have had good starting pitching, good bullpen pitching, but lack of offense. their offense has been helter-skelter. Right. When they score, when, when teams go through, uh, I mean, when Kansas City was playing very well, their offense was averaging seven runs. When the Indians won nine out of ten, they were scoring six plus a game. Hit him. Bases oh, loaded. Wow. He'll take it. On a one-two pitch. Yeah, he didn't try. That's for sure. He didn't try to hit him. Now Cabrera shaking that right wrist. I think it got him just below the wrist, more on the forearm. But out comes James Quinlan along with Tribe skipper Terry Francona to take a closer look at Cabrera. Maybe he got him more on the hand. Let's it's only the second uh, guy that Young has hit this year. Yeah, it got him on the hand. You'll see they're looking at that, either the bottom hand or, or the finger, where he holds that bat at the end. And that bat might have had something to do with it, you know, put a yeah. little pressure after it hit him on the hand. Yeah, he never got the hand out of the way. It got him right up on top, yeah. it looked like, off the knuckles. So then it goes straight down. The former Mariner is Drupal Cabrera aboard to load him up. Well, well right out. where they want him now with Brantley coming to the plate, the base is loaded. Indians batting 349 as a team with the bases loaded this year, including with less than two outs. 
a 394 average. And Michael Brantley, how about six for ten with the bases loaded boy, this year? Oh boy, well, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Not for him. And you talk about the consistent level of play we've seen from him. He's uh, three for five with less than two out, and he's three for five with two outs. He's, he's the same <laughs> every day. I mean, we continue to say that, but it's a treat to watch this guy play baseball. Outside, he missed one and one. Offensively, defensively, he is just uh, very consistent. Never gets too high, never too low, not of a lot of emotions. He, he has the same approach whether there's a guy on base or whether they're loaded. He never gets too aggressive. Chris Young with a 1-1. One, one. Great foul by Brantley. I guess with Michael Brantley, you can ca call his style controlled aggressiveness. You know, because he, he never really gets himself out, but there's times where he'll go after the first pitch knowing what he's going to get. And it seems like he can be successful when he does it. He's behind in the count. See if Young goes to that high fastball. He might either get a pop up or a swing and miss. Breaking ball. And he pops it up. Foul. And it's just beyond the reach of Seeger, who couldn't get to the railing in time. Ball didn't have enough air right. under it. Well, it just wasn't high enough. That is correct. He wanted to try and get a free out over there in foul territory. Just couldn't get there because he's playing off the bag at third base. And that breaking ball jammed Michael a little bit. By the time Seeger could get over there, just ran out of room. Grabbed himself a nice mic. Again, the one two from Young. There's the high pitch, but way out of the strike zone to even the count. Murphy, the runner at third base, he drew the one out walk. Bourne singled to right field, and Cabrera down in the count was hit by a pitch. Now the 2 2 to Brantley. Out back. The one thing about Chris Young, Rick, that's interesting to me is that you pointed out coming in tonight, only 67 hits allowed in 86 yeah. innings. But, boy, 34 walks against 43 strikeouts. True. A lot of free passes. For yeah, a guy he seems to have very good command. He never gives in, though. I mean, he'll make you swing at his pitch. But now he's got to give in. Now is when you want to see a homer off this guy. He's given up 12. Deep left field. Ackley over near the line. Makes the catch in fair territory. Murphy will tag and score, and the Indians have tied the game. Brantley with RBI number 52 on the year. Well, and you talk about the walks. It was a Murphy walk that ended up coming around to score. Sacrifice fly for Michael. Well, they come back and tie it up. Okay. The, the walks stand out for Young and also the homers. 12 homers, you yeah. wouldn't think, but somebody has been getting on that fastball, I think, a little bit. Now's the time you want one when you have a couple guys on base. Well, Carlos Santana struck out his first time up. He tried to check on a two strike pitch and went around too far. Over the outside corner. Santana on the foot, but he was able to skip out of the way. And a 
foul back. Chris Young made his major league debut in August of 04 with the Texas Rangers. And he had a lot of success pitching with the San Diego Padres. Also pitched for the New York Mets and now here with Seattle. Made one, two. Hit foul. Made the all-star team with the Padres back in 2007. And the only other time he pitched against the Indians was back in 05. When he was a Ranger. Pitched a gem. I think we've seen him more in spring training than we've, than right. we've seen him anywhere else. I think you're right. Santana able to lay off, and the count evens at two and two. Santana trying to deliver that big hit to give the Indians the lead here in the third inning. And a liner caught at first behind the bag by Morrison to end the inning. And the Indians load them up with one out. They get the tying run home. And we're tied 1-1 as Kyle Seeger will be coming up third here in the bottom half of inning number three for the Mariners. As you enjoy a cold one, to stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Bottom of the third, James Jones to lead off for the Mariners. James Jones, born in Brooklyn, New York. Fourth round pick of the Mariners in 09. And this year began his major league career with a 15 game hitting streak. Wow, that's the way to start, huh?
Bouncing ball to first base. Jones, did it hit him in the foot? And yes, it, it did. It must have. He went down he, in the yeah. deep. He sure did. They had to call a tow truck to get it right off the front foot. Watch this. Yeah, right off. Oof. He went down all right. Now the 2 2. Line drive, base hit. He gets a second chance and he makes good on it. Well, he stayed on the baseball. He went the other way. And now he's a guy you have to really be careful with because he has 14 stolen bases this year. He's got terrific speed. Hey, he hit a pretty good pitch there that was going down and away. You're just hoping that his toe is still hurting a little bit where he won't start running. Andy Van Slyke, first base coach, giving him a few pointers. He stole a few bags in his day. Formerly with the Detroit Tiger staff, but a, a good friend of his former teammate Lloyd McClendon. The two of them served on Jim Leland's staff in Detroit. It's interesting, this Mariner staff. A lot of the connections go back to their days in Pittsburgh together. Trent Jewett is the bench coach. He served on that pirate staff. Rich Donnelly over at third base was a member of Jim Leland's staff. Here's Rich Donnelly, the pride of Steubenville, Ohio. Born and raised there, still makes his home in Steubenville. Robinson Cano didn't like it. Cano hit a ball to center field his first time up. Hit it hard, but hit it into the tracks of Michael Bourne. Yeah, he's, he swung at a breaking ball and hit it right on the nose. Kept his hands back. Close play at first. Jones did. Get back just ahead of the tag of Santana. Isn't it funny though when last year when Cano was with the Yankees, it's all you ever hear heard about was Robinson Cano, and you haven't heard a whole lot about him this year after the signing because he's out here in Seattle. You just don't hear a lot about him. He's still hitting 324. A lot of multi-hit games, just not hitting for the power because of this ballpark. Another close play. That one might have been closer than the one before. And Trevor Bauer has nearly picked him off twice. This one real close. Yeah, it was close. He did just get the hand in. But it's a good enough pick where it'll, it should shorten him up a bit. Maybe a half a step, which is exactly what you want to do when you've got a guy out there that can steal a base. Back. One and two to count on. The Mariners' number three hitter. Well, when you look at the Seattle Mariners, they, they already had Felix Hernandez and Iwakuma, so they had two excellent starting pitchers. They had the cornerstones of their pitching rotation all. Samantha, they needed a star. They needed somebody with some star power for their everyday lineup. Yeah. A drawing card, if you will. Ever since Ichiro left, they haven't had that here. Well, they certainly paid for it. Back nice. to Bauer. There's one. On to first. Double play. Well done by Trevor. Now, Bauer fields his position very well. Yes, he does. He gives a good feed. He covers first base. He, he does. He's he's a pretty darn good athlete. And that was a nice pitch. It almost looked like a cutter in on the hands. And an easy turn. You just get the 
there you'll see it's a it's a break and bottom of slider, but it looked like a hard cutter, didn't it? Yeah. Because it got in there, it certainly acted like one. And once he got the baseball, he gave a good feed to Cabrera, and it's an easy double play. And it brings up Kyle Seeger with the bases empty and two down. Watched the last time we were in Cleveland, Doug Eddings, the home plate umpire. Every time that ball's in the dirt, he will go ahead and throw him back. He doesn't give it to the catcher. He he doesn't. He needs his arm rubbed after the game. He throws a hundred pitches. We may have to take him out in the seventh. Now the one-one pitch. It's funny. I was at my son's game. Recently, whenever we had an off day, and I, it struck me because I saw you know ball that was fouled off, hit the dirt, went back, hit the screen, and the umpire's like, "Get that ball and throw it back to the pitcher." We only, yeah, that's the only one we have. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, man, how many ball I, I got to thinking about, man, in the major leagues, if a ball just skims the dirt, yeah, get it out of there. It really is remarkable. Back in the day, pitchers used to love when it hits the dirt and gets a little scuff mark on it because they knew what to do with it. High fly ball, right field over near the seats. David Murphy's there. Does he have room? No, he won't. And out goes Jan Gomes. That ball probably hung out where he didn't want it. But Seeger unable to do anything but hit it foul. You know what's interesting, Rick? 13 batters faced for Trevor Bauer. Only three first pitch strikes. Well, normally, any pitcher wants to get ahead, work from in front. He certainly would like to. Another one, two. A little bit high. He hasn't had that good curveball yet. Once he, he gets that rolling, that'll be a good pitch for him against this lineup. The left hander where he can take enough off. That has been a very good pitch for him this year. There it is. He got him. Came right back with it. Gets his first strike out of the night. Three complete. We are tied at one.
1-1, fourth inning here in Seattle. The Indians and the Mariners tied 1-1. Fans want to remind you, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STOFANPHOTO for a chance to have one of your pictures shown during our telecast. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Jason Kipnis leading off the fourth inning, and the pitch is up high, ball one. Kipnis tried to win the game for the Indians in Arizona, that extra inning affair with an inside-the-park home run, but he was thrown out at the dish. Took two great relay throws to get him. But that's exactly what Arizona executed. And Jason said, I had no idea that Didi Gregorius had that good of an arm. Yeah. He uncorked a dandy. Oh, he's... He, was, he was way out there in left center field, too. He said, I'm running as hard as I can. I look up, and he's already got the ball waiting for me at home plate. He said he just ran out of gas. Robinson Cano scoops it up, throws it out one away. Well, 12,500 fans will get a Jason Kipnis bobblehead. That'll be courtesy of First Energy. That'll be Tuesday, July 8th. The Indians will take on the New York Yankees for the first and only time of the year. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. Here's Lonnie Chisenhall taking a strike. Look at Lonnie rocking the uh, Pete Vukovic Fu Manchu. <laughs> There's a line drive down the left field line. Fair ball. <laughs> That's why he hit a double. You dropped a Vuki on him. <laughs> Vuk would be proud of that one, wouldn't <laughs> yeah. he? Clue Hayward gets the double. As a pitcher, he'd be cursing up a storm. <laughs> little flare down the left field line. And Lonnie Chisinau's got a one-out double. There you go. Lonnie using the whole field, and uh, this is a beautiful thing. Right down here inside the chalk. And it just doesn't get far enough to get down in there. It hits that little padding to shoot out, and he gets into second base easily. His 20th double this year. All five Indians base runners have come with one wow. out. Here's Jan Gomes who flied to right his first time up. Ah! Among catchers who are the primary catchers on their teams, Gomes in the American League has scored the most runs. Line the third boy hit it hard, but right at Seeger. Two down. Let's go downstairs to Katie. Well, he hasn't just done it at the plate lately, Matt. He's done it behind the plate, throwing out seven of his last 11 would-be base stealers. And Terry Francona spoke about him in our Here Right Audiology Sounds of the Game. I think everybody wanted to panic and jump off bridges, and sometimes you got to be patient and know that trust guys and that you know that that work hard and are conscientious because his talent's there, and it's such a you know he's he's become a, a force behind the plate. We don't we pitch out very very seldom, and we don't need to because he controls the running game. As long as the pitchers give him a chance, he's going to throw them out more often than not. Yeah, well said. If the pitchers give him an opportunity. Gomes will have no problem. Today they stole a base because it was a pitch that was in the dirt and really tough to throw on. Oh, that's called a strike. I don't know. One on one to count. Swisher hit it hard his first time up, but it nailed the pitcher, Chris Young, in the foot, and it just stopped. 
never it didn't ricochet. It didn't do anything. Straight down. Oh, that's a pretty good hook. One and two. Indians looking for a two out hit. To try and take the lead. Just missing. Well, you have to have a good eye to take this pitch. Check it out on our Nissan pitch tracker. He's going to wrap that curveball or try to wrap it around, but it was definitely outside. Definitely outside. And he is 0 for 4 so far tonight with a runner in scoring position. And Swisher sends one high in the air to left field. Back goes Ackley. And he'll make the grab. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Here at Safeco Field in Seattle, we are still tied at one. Fourth coming up here at Safeco. Right now on FoxSportsOhio.com. Joe Reedy tells you why one member of the Indians farm system has the most unique managerial job. Johnny Man Manziel talks about what else, the scrutiny surrounding his personal life, and a throwback video of Andrew Wiggins showing his skills in high school. It's all on FoxSportsOhio.com. There isn't a football player in the National Football League right now who can't wait for the games to start more than Johnny Manziel. So people will just get off his back and start talking about something that matters. Oh, yeah, the build up, the lead up. Let the games begin. Logan Morrison leading off the fourth inning for the Mariners takes a strike. Morrison a ground out his first time up. Before about the, the injury problems for Morrison, he missed 52 games with a hamstring strain. But I thought it was interesting when he was healthy, he was also healthy, ready to go. And Lloyd McClendon said, Nope, you're going to spend all 20 days in the minors. He wanted to use every day of the rehab assignment a lot of time so he can work on his timing and just get his swing right. And stay you know, back on the baseball. You, think about how many times you got to rush him, got to get him back. Well, in this case, they said, no, I don't want to do that. That's wise sometimes, you know, for a guy that you just don't pull him back in. And obviously, Lloyd knew something because he was right on. Oh. 
And Morrison said it was more than just the physical aspect of the swing that he was working on. He was he said, you know, OK, I made an out. But why did I make the out? What did I just do? And he said, you know, it, people might think it's overthinking it. But he said there is where you find the root of your problems with your swing. When you get when you ask those questions, it leads you to, oh, because I did this or. I, yes. You know, correcting yourself, knowing what you do. That's knowing your swing. So you want to go down, and he said it helped him stay behind the baseball like that swing right there. You know, you can make adjustments on your own, and you can pick it up by yourself. That was a good swing by Morris. Watch him stay back behind it. See where that head was back? And he just drills it the other way. He got to a point where I really like this, Rick. He says, after my bats now, the questions I ask, did I swing at a good pitch? Did I hit the ball hard? Okay, if I did those two things, I won. Yeah, you, you feel good about yourself. It's a, it, you know what? It's a positive at bat. You don't take anything negative out, even though you made an out. That's okay. Right. You still d did the things that you had to do. I, I totally understand that. Mike Zanino popped up on the infield his first time to the plate. Fouls one right back. Zanino, a guy that's been hot lately, homering in four of his last five games. It's this one in the air to deep left field. Back is Brantley on the track at the wall. He jumps up and makes the catch right in front of the 376 foot mark, and they double him up at first base. Oh, yes. a terrific relay. Brantley to Cabrera to Santana, and Morrison got caught napping. He sure did. Yeah, you get it in, you get it in quickly, and they realized they had a chance. I thought this ball, it was a breaking ball that Zanino had enough to get it out of here. Watch Brantley go back. He was right at the wall. He jumps, but he gets it back in. And now when we watch this relay, you're going to see Cabrera get it over to Santana. They get him easily at first base. I don't know if he was busting back or I didn't see exactly where he went, but he certainly was out. Look at he's, you know, he didn't bust it back. At least that it doesn't look like it. I, I don't know. I think he was just he was a little tardy in picking up where Michael Brantley was. He didn't even get to second base, so oh. he should have had plenty of time to get back. Look at this. That plays that plays big, really. So a two-out single by Saunders keeps the inning alive. All right, he takes a secondary lead. And there, whether it's a home run or not, he stopped. Now he goes again, thinking it's going to get over. That's where he made the mistake. Exactly. He should have been three quarters of the way just watching. He went back. He got up. He went back. That's bad base running. That is not good base running on his part. No one to blame but yourself right there. I'm still a little confused. It's, it's hard to the perspective on that's a little bit hard not knowing exactly where the ball was as it gets away from Gomes down to second. And Morrison or Tony Saunders gets in the scoring position. Wild pitch. He went to backhand that ball and climbed up his arm. You know, he thought he was going to be able to catch that ball, Matt, and it didn't. It ricocheted off him, so that'll be a wild pitch, and he gets into scoring position. Last thought on the base running mistake, though. I'm not sure why Morrison, he went back to first and then started back towards second yeah, base. I that don't understand. Like he was going to tag up. You never tag up there. You go to second base and wait. And in his case, you go three quarters of the way and wait. If it's, uh, if it's over the fence, if it's over the fence, you cruise home anyway. Yeah. There's nowhere to go. Not sure what he saw there that made him maneuver that way, but hey. Base running. Two out base uh, base hit can give the Mariners the lead here as Dustin Ackley is ahead of the count two and zero, oh, and he had a wicked cut, but fouls it back.
And I'll tell you right now, I know that Van Slyke over at first base is going to talk to him about it before it's all said and done. What are you thinking about and where were you going? There's no reason to. He'll explain it all. But as a base runner, you're in the big leagues, you ought to know. Three and one to Ackley. He's on the verge of walking for the second time tonight. Two. Trevor Bauer just over 70 pitches on the night. 43 out of his 72 pitches have been strikes tonight. The pitchers will tell you sometimes you go out there and you've got electric stuff. Sometimes you go out there and you're searching for it. You have to work. Interesting that he only has the one strikeout so far tonight. That's all right. Got a couple double play balls, so three two big curveball, and it's a little bit high. He wanted it. Bauer thought he had him struck out, didn't get the call. And now there are two on with two out, and the inning continues for the number nine hitter, Brad Miller. Well, he thought he had it. Let's look here and say that's a little high. That's a little bit high. Get it down in the zone. He had him with a good breaking ball. I think that was the right call. When he takes enough off that curveball and he slows it down, he has a very effective pitch to the lefties. So that is his second walk. Keeps the inning going. Bring up Brad Miller. Brad Miller grounded out to first base. His first trip up. And he this one into center field. Bourne coming hard. Can't get there. It's going to drop. And the Mariners take the lead. It's their second. Two out. Bloop single to center field. It drives in a run on the night. 2 1 Seattle. Yeah, that's exactly how their first run came from Seeger off the bat. This one was not hit as hard as Seeger's. That was a little breaking ball there that he fists into center. So both the Mariners runs coming with two outs. Two out base hits runners in scoring position. That's what they've been doing well as a team and they're continuing it tonight. Chavez, who singled, stole the base, and scored Seattle's first run in the first inning.
one two pitch. He went around. He'll have to throw to first to complete the out. He does. The inning is over. But the Mariners with another two out RBI hit. And it's a two to one Seattle lead. Michael Brantley helped short circuit what could have been a bigger inning. by Sunnyside Toyota, a quarter mile west of the Great Northern Mall on the North Homestead Auto Mile. By Levin Furniture, for the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin. And by Kia, visit mykiacleveland.com to learn more. Two one Seattle. Here in the fifth inning, David Murphy leading it off. He walked and scored the Indians' only run in the third inning. Strikeout for Chris Young here tonight. Tomorrow, a full day of MLB action, beginning with the Rangers taking on the Twins on FS1. Then it's baseball night in America as the Red Sox take on the Yankees. Finally, join us for Indians and Mariners at 9:30 on Sports Time Ohio. Michael Bourne singled his last time up. He's one for two on the night. Every base runner the Indians have had has come with one out. And, and what do you know? I think it's a trend. Is it a double? Yes. Bourne's going for two. And Here's the throw by Jones. Not in time. Great hustle. Well That's done. Third one out double of the night for the Indians. You know, anytime you, uh, you're a hitter and you can run like Bourne and you see a defender going away from the play, it's always worth the risk. He's got a spin turn and being the left handed thrower he's got to make a perfect throw. Not an easy thing to do when you have to turn around and pick up your target so it wasn't right on line. So that's always a good gamble if you're a guy with uh, some decent speed. If he's not going right at him and he's going left or right. Go ahead and challenge. Well, now the Indians. Have to execute. Right now the difference in the game and it's only one run. And it's a slight difference. But it sometimes can be the difference between winning and losing. The Indians are 0 for 5 with a runner in scoring position. Seattle is 2 for 5. 
Well, and that's you, you end up playing small ball. They don't give you extra outs. They're the best fielding team in the league. Cabrera hits a high fly ball right field. Saunders over near the line. Bourne will tag, but will he have a chance to go? No. It's okay. He's in scoring position. No need to go. But the thing you talk about, you know, that, that bullpen, how good Seattle's bullpen has been, you end up turning this into a six inning game. So yeah. you want to go in there with at least a tie. You don't want to go in that sixth, seventh inning down. Well, Seattle 35 and 5 when they lead after seven. Let's see what they're after six. Probably about the same. Meanwhile, Michael Brantley, who drove in the Indians' only run, steps in. Yeah, when they lead after six, they're 30 and seven. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It turns into a little league game with these guys. Oh! Brantley taking the strike. But that has been one of the issues for the Indians as far as in this last week or 10 days is hitting with runners in scoring position. It hasn't been a consistent thing. They hit a stretch there where they were very cold. They were pretty good uh, in Arizona. They got the bats going and scored a bunch of runs in the two games there. And again, coming in here, you don't expect a ton of offense against the Mariners pitching staff that throws well at home. 0 1 pitch. Out of play. And hey, you know, sometimes, Rick. I've often wondered to myself, is it is it really pure skill or how much of the pendulum of luck swings your way? Let's look at Seattle's two RBI hits tonight. Both kind of flares. One was I think he broke his bat, but they fell and got luck. the run home. Luck has a lot of a lot to do with it. Baseball gods. You know? When you're when you're struggling, sometimes you really gotta battle your way through it. And there are times when you get a base hit, let's say with a runner in scoring position, if you can just break a bat. And get it in to score a run. That makes everybody else feel better. It yeah. doesn't have to be a line shot bullet. Say, oh yeah, we're we're locked in. Any way you can get them in with scoring position, and especially with two outs, that seems to take a little pressure off everybody else and the team. And the longer you go without getting one, the tougher it gets. It seems. Now one two to Brantley. Off the end of the bat. And a change up. Which like it change never gets up. there. I know it. Well, it being 6'10, he's releasing that ball about halfway to home plate. Well, and again, he's only throwing 87, but that change up's at 78, so he's got enough separation that it's still a very deceptive pitch for him. You can tell where the guys, uh, how they swing at if, if it's tough to pick up. Well, the Indians have been leaning on Michael Brantley all season long. Leads the team and runs batted in. And they're leaning on him again here tonight. He drove in their first run in the third. The only run thus far. Can he deliver with a hit to tie it up here in the fifth now? First base side. I'll tell you when he was in Arizona, Brantley made that I can recall three loud outs. I mean, line drives right off the bat. He hit the tonight his first at bat lined out the shortstop. He's made a lot of outs on this trip that really easily could have been base hits, but that he has hit right on the nose. You say you take that at bat away. What did I do? Did I swing at a good pitch and did I hit it hard? He, he can walk away and say, I had good at bats. In the air, foul ground. Get out. And we'll drop. Now there's a case there. Had a, had a player been there, that could have been ruled fan interference. Fan was over the railing in the field of play, but nobody was there. And it count one and two. Deep 
right center field. Jones back. He says he's got it, and he does. Michael hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark, and the inning is over. I mean, it's a little chilly, but come on now. Well, they come prepare. You see, she's blowing her nose. She's got the blanket. I think that's how Katie is down in the dugout on the side, hiding over there in a jacket, blanket, blowing her nose. Watching a soccer game. <laughs> Trevor Bauer delivers. And James Jones takes a strike. He singled his last time up. Now, how many times you see the color of a bat like that? It's great. Yeah. It looks like he went into somebody's garage and dug it out of a bin. It's, yeah, it's about 40 years old. Knocked him up on the infield. One away. In game recap brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Kyle Seeger, a two out RBI single in the first, gave the Mariners a 1 0 lead. The Indians would tie it on a sack fly by Michael Brantley with the bases loaded in the third inning. And then the Mariners go ahead on another two out RBI hit, this one by Brad Miller. This game is shaping up like every other game Trevor Bauer has pitched this year. I just did a little quick math. I know you said, Rick, boy, you know, Indians don't they score don't a lot score of runs for this but guy. How, how about this? In the eight starts that he has made, the average score in those games has been three and a half to four. So seven and a half total runs. Yeah. Every time he starts. I know it. He, he's just pitched on some tough days. Time to look at the start. It's on how you pitch. It's when you pitch. If you could pitch on a day where you get a little offensive help, it, it certainly makes it easier. But it, to me, when I watch this kid pitch, he never goes out there with any any lead that he can relax with. He's he's in tight ball games. Robinson Cano 0 for two. And now a one two pitch. Got him to swing a ball oh, in the dirt. That ball bounced out in front of the plate. And you 
don't get Cano. He's he got him into the double play. And now he gets a swing and a miss. He's handled very easily today. Third strikeout for Bauer. Take another look. This is way out in front. But that's wow, no. you're right. Yeah. That's high lie there. Cricket. Kyle Seeger, two out RBI hit in the first. We showed you that a moment ago. Struck out his last time. Hit. Mariners have had at least one hit in every inning so far tonight. Bauer trying to set him down one, two, three for the first time. Beat the Angels tonight, 8-6. Tigers and Astros, they're in extra innings. Tied 3-3 in the 10th. Rangers beat the Twins, 5-4. Down in the dirt. Yeah, Houston had uh, the Tigers down 3-2. I think the Tigers came back in the 8th. Tie it up. Detroit riding a 7-game winning streak. Bauer with a 2 2. Rip to right, a base hit. And Seeger's going to go for two. And he'll have it easily. Well, Seeger gets his 20th double. He st stayed back nicely. He saw enough of that curveball. Bauer had to finally bring one up to him, and he was ready for it. He was ready for it. Belled high, and he didn't get the bite on it he wanted. Seeger drilled it down into the corner, so he will get himself in scoring position now with two outs here in the fifth. And out comes Mickey Callaway for the first time tonight. Corey Kluber was so good in his last start. Mickey never had to make an appearance. I think that's how Mickey likes it. He wishes he never would have to make an appearance, but you certainly do at times, and I think they're just going to go over this scouting report here with Morrison. Yeah, this isn't a let's go out and stall and get the no, bullpen no, ready. No, no, this is just going out and talking to him how he's going to go about this guy and look who's on deck. You got Zanino, the right hander, the only right hander that is uh, in the lineup on deck. So they're, they're just going over how they're going to go about it. Where the infield's going to be playing and things like that. Well, as stated before, the Indians tonight 0 for 7 with a runner in scoring position. Mariners 2 for 5. And this is where they've made up some of their offensive deficiencies this year because they've hit 266 as a team yeah. this year with runners in scoring position. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. Two out single in the first to get their first run. Two out single in the fourth to get their second. In the air to center field. Brantley is there. And he'll make the catch. Bauer gets out of further trouble. And we played five innings. Seattle two, Cleveland one.
So, and we're going to the sixth inning. And I guess it's somewhat surprising, at least it is to me, that the Mariners are going to make the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen already. Thank Joe Bimel will come on. Uh, yeah, they've got a great bullpen, but That's Chris Young, four hits allowed in five innings of uh, work. It doesn't surprise me because he wants to match up now to go through some left-handers here when you have Kipnis and Chisenhall. And I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Young it was he pitched a fine game. He only gave up, like you said, the four hits. He said six of his seven starts in here. He's given up four hits, but th this is a five and fly here. He was at 91 pitches on the night, so. Well, he knows him a lot better than we do. And when you look at his numbers, he's pitched uh, one, two, four games. He's only gone over 100 pitches. Okay, over. So that's that's about his limit. And remember, you know, he missed a lot of time with the thoracic outlet syndrome, the shoulder surgery. and That might be part of the long-term plan, you know, to keep him right. strong all season long. Well, and Bimel, he is allowed only uh, runs in only two of his 27 games this year. No runs in his last 14 and two-thirds innings, so that's what he's banking on. Carlos Santana, Jason Kipnis, Lonnie Chisholm here in the sixth. Shooting for the outside corner, but it's off the plate one and one. Outside again. Bimel signed with the Mariners this past winter as a free agent. He was a minor league free agent. A lot of times you look at a team's offseason moves. There's usually a small number, maybe a handful, that actually grabs some ink, gets some headlines, some notoriety. A lot of your best off-season maneuvers are the ones that go virtually unnoticed. Quiet. Yes. 3-1 pitch. Oh, Santana chase ball four, and now it's a full count. Now, rarely he comes up with the change of it. When, the, when Santana has the count in his favor like that, you don't see him swing at many that are out of the zone that would have been able to put him on first base. They are pitch. Wow. 84 miles an hour, and somehow he threw it by him. Well, 4-3-2-1 is back at Progressive Field. Fans again take advantage of the $4 12-ounce beers, $3 hot dogs, $2 soda refills. Every game out at the ballpark, you can visit Indians.com for the ticket details. Jason Kipp has doubled in the second inning. Grounded out his last time up. Doesn't like that first call. And now it's 0 2. There's Rick Waits, former Indians pitcher. Pitching coach now here with the Mariners. And he got a piece of it, but into the glove of Zanino. Two down. Two strikeouts for 
The soft tossing Joe Bimel. It sounded like he got a piece of it, but uh, Zanino held on, comes up and throws it to third. Just barely, and you know, he, he gets a heady and he teases you. He really ex tries to expand the zone. The softer, the better. Chisnall looks at the ball in the dirt. Bouncing ball to second base right at Cano. And the Indians go quietly here in the sixth inning. It remains two to one Seattle. Bottom of the sixth inning here at Safeco Field. Time now for our AT&T fan photo of the game. Remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STOFanPhoto for a chance to have them shown during one of our telecasts this year. Bottom third. Actually, Mike Zanito, the number six hitter leading off, then the seven, eight, nine guys. Zanino is 0 for 2. He fly the deep left that turned into a double play in the fourth inning. And quite possibly a really big play in this game. Because the next guy up, Saunders got a base hit, then a walk, then a two out RBI hit followed. So it could have been a big inning for the yeah. Mariners. The way you look at it right now, it certainly could have been. And with runs coming at a premium in this ball game. We shall see. Zanino is swinging a miss. He chased one in the dirt. Fourth strikeout for Trevor Bauer. And let's go back and take a look at the double play ball. Brantley went back, made the catch in front of the wall. It wouldn't have been a home run. That was just bad base run. But now with the split screen, watch on your right. He goes back, and now he starts running towards second base as Brantley makes yeah. the catch. That's, that's unbelievable. I mean, right there, that showed you what kind of base running that was. He had no clue. And that was a big play in the inning because they did end up scoring a run, but it could have been much bigger. But that's a great second look by our guys in the truck in coordination with our camera operators to give you an idea of the, of the perspective of where the base runner was with relationship to where Brantley was making the catch.
Saunders two for two in his return. Doubled in the second, single and scored in the fourth. That's the difference in the game. The problem the Mariners are going to have the rest of the year. At least in the division. Who knows how the wild card will shake out of all this, but Oakland is now almost 20 games over 500. They're 49 and 30. They pulled away with a late surge to beat Miami tonight, 9 5. So it just doesn't look like Oakland's coming back to the pack anytime soon. Well, you don't think they will. I mean, when you look at them and their run differential, I mean, they're on a, they're in a different world. Rounded well, the second base, Kipnis has it. Too bad. But you never when you they're five and five against Oak. Yeah, Seattle. Is. So you know what you do, you hold your own ground. They've got nine more to go. You can beat them at some point in time. You never know the second half, and you're going to have to play tough against them and play well in your division if you're Seattle. And the Indians are in the same same spot. The only difference for the Indians is that the Tigers, because of their previous month, they're not as far out in front. They're still within striking distance. Well, they're, they're starting to play better. They hit their month. Now, when you think about it, they had a bad month. Yeah. And it started with the sweep from the Indians, you know, when they took them. But I'll tell you, they turned it around now, and it got them going when they swept the Indians. And now they've won seven straight. And they're 10 games over that 500 mark. So, you know, they're going to start taking off. They already had their slump, I think, for the year. I don't think they're going to come back and have another one like that. Jason Kipnis throws out Dustin Ackley. Trevor Bauer, six strong innings. He's only given up two, but he's on the short end as we go to the seventh. Battle seventh inning and look at Safeco Field from our Panini's overstuffed can. Nice Friday night crowd. They'll have fireworks after the ball game here this evening. At first look, the, far, uh, the forecast didn't look that good. Thought maybe the roof would be closed tonight, but it's been open all evening. Danny Farquhar coming on now, his 33rd appearance. And he's got the bottom third of the Indians order coming up. Jan Gomes, Nick Swisher, and David Murphy. Tied for second in appearances for the Mariners staff coming out of the bullpen. We told you that the, the Mariners bullpen has an ERA of 163 over the last 39 games, allowing just one run over the last 20 innings. And that's one reason why he went to his bullpen, I think, after five innings by Chris Young. One run in the last 20 innings. Yeah, I mean, they have confidence in this bullpen, so he's not afraid to go match up. So the Indians are going to have to dig down and try and find a way to get a couple across here. I'll tell you, when the Red Sox were here, their players, I'm told, were in 
incredibly impressed with the quality of arms that were coming out of the Seattle bullpen. Some of the guys they hadn't heard of before. Farquhar with a first pitch that's a little bit outside. Funny thing, you, they play out here, you don't hear a lot about them because they're so far away. You know, you you get back east, and if you're not from New York or Boston, you don't hear a whole lot about other teams. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. But that, and that I'm sure is fine the way Seattle goes. They don't care. It's were, easier flying under the radar. Were they even more mysterious during your era because oh, there, yeah. there wasn't. 24-hour sports talk and TV. Three and hours difference. You don't even know exactly. I mean, now they have videos. You can get a look at some of these guys and see what they throw. But I mean, this is the first time we faced them this year. And other than unless you scour the highlights, you're not going to see a whole lot about them. One-two pitch, swing and a miss of the curveball. Got him. Join Joe Hayden and his friends on uh, Thursday, July 17th at Classic Park in Eastlake for Celebrity Softball. There's a home run derby at 6. Softball games at 7. You can take photos, get autographs. Log on to captainsbaseball.com for all the ticket information. I suppose in your era, you, you, you had to take advantage of, like, spring training games because it might be... Your best opportunity to see uh, guys yeah, you know, from no the doubt. West Coast when yeah. you train in Tucson. Those uh, yeah, there was no no video around where you got to see them and unless you you had to remember put a book down or you talked to somebody that knew them or faced them or you know teammates that have done that. And if you didn't, let's get in the box and go, baby. I'm thinking back even on the job training, even the game of the week back in those days. Very rarely did you ever see a West Coast team. In the MLB game of the week that was right. on NBC back in right. those days. A little bit low. Well, yeah, it, it was so different. You, you get every game now one way or another. You can watch any game, every game. And, you know, with the baseball channel now, MLB, they break into yeah. games that are going on. And Even they, if you, you can't see, see a game, you'll see every highlight. Right. You'll see every highlight of anything that went well or somebody that's going good. So you do. You, you're able to catch up on them more nowadays, no question. Which I, I love. I mean, I, I love watching it myself. I think about, you know, in your era, this week in baseball was kind of a big deal for players. You'd probably tune yeah. in just to see if, if you got on there, if you were on the highlights. Well, I heard stories that in the NFL uh, during the 70s when Monday Night Football became a phenomenon teams players would tune in at halftime to see if they made the halftime high, right, highlights right on Monday Night Football sure because that was the only time you might see anything that's the, that's all it was out you're right and if you did you know you did something right well Nick Swisher does something right here he gets aboard and the Indians have the tying run at first with one out in the seventh inning David Murphy coming up. Time for a Mazda game break. First back to the studio. Here's Al. <laughs> Twenty five home runs. Not a brave you kid, and, and that's with he he missed uh, what? Two. It was three weeks, I think, on the disabled. Yeah. It, was, it was I think it was a little more than two. All right, key spot here for the Indians as Murphy swings and misses. It's one and one. You get into the late innings against this Mariners bullpen, you you hope you can take advantage of any opportunity you get. Nick Swisher, the tying run at first. Well, that was an opportunity. So now you need a first and third. Murphy hits one in the air to left. But Ackley is back to get it. Two down. And now Michael Bourne. He's swinging the bat very well. He has a six game hitting streak. He has two hits tonight. Ten hits now in his last. 26 at bats. Outside ball one. And Bourne 
looks at a strike. Danny Farquhar was originally a 10th round pick of the Blue Jays back in 08. Was traded to Oakland in exchange for Rajay Davis. Then went back to Toronto. Back to Oakland. <laughs> then he went to the Yankees on a waiver claim. And then he eventually came to Seattle as part of the Ichiro package. Here's Rick Waite's first trip to the mound. As he goes out to talk to Farquhar in a 3 1 count with Bourne up and as Dribble Cabrera on deck. Well, he walks Swisher, so Waiter must have seen something. Uh, when he threw the breaking ball, it was good, but was everything else that he was throwing that was going up and away. So he must have picked up something mechanically. Waiter always had a good stash as a player. He's kind of got the Goose Gossage thing working. Yeah. Coach Gossage, Waiter. <laughs> It's a full count now for Bourne. Nick Swisher will be off at first. And a slow chopper. And Bourne's going to beat it out. Swisher's on his way to third. Here's the throw, and they got him. Oh, man. So the Mariners make a blunder and they still get out of it smelling like a rose. Time now for the seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. Bauer stays out there. Bauer has pitched a terrific game here tonight. He's only given up the two runs. He has retired the last four in a row. Seven of the last eight for Bauer. And that's the third time through the order. Tell you what, the kids pitched well again tonight. He goes out there and and he gets after you. Here's what's interesting. I saw a stat before the ball game as you see Kyle Crockett not getting loose. Swung out and missed. Oh man, well, can't ever find it when you need it. <laughs> Trevor Bauer says so far here this year his first inning ERA is 1.13. 
from innings two on as ERA is over five. That looked like a strike, but didn't get the call. That didn't jive tonight. He's given up one run in the first and one run in the second inning on. And both runs, they, they were able to get two out base hits. He had a chance to get out of innings. So, I mean, Seattle, and they weren't hit hard, but they, they, were, they found a way to get base hits. That's a good pitch. Wow. See he came right back with the same pitch, said, okay, you didn't like the last one? How about this one? So third time through the order, Trevor Bauer retires eight out of nine and has four of his five strikeouts in the ballgame. So that shows he you got better. he's getting better too, Rick. Yeah, he is. Well, you remember that one game where he went out and threw 119 pitches. I mean, they give him an opportunity, and I like him going back out there. It's a one-run ball game against the Angels where they needed innings. He went six and two-thirds through 119 pitches. Ended up getting a win against the Angels that game. I mean, that's something that, that this kid's going to learn from. And I'll tell you what, he's t he battles you out there. He's come a long way in a year. Think about it. Where he was at last year compared to where he is at right now. And he's only 23, and he's going to get a heck of a lot better. He's a competitive guy, and he proves it when he goes out there to pitch. I would think he's going to be, have the opportunity. Terry's going to give him that opportunity to go out there. And I think if Cano gets up, they'll probably go to the bullpen. Uh-oh. That's hit deep to right field, and she is gone. Not the guy you're thinking of when it comes to home run power in the Seattle lineup. In fact, it's his first home run of the year. Andy Chavez makes it 3-1 to one Seattle. And, and Bauer can give him up. He's given up. This is number nine. But he went down with a little breaking ball down and in. And that's left-handers Haven. And he was able to get the barrel of the bat out front, hit it into the seats. And that swing will do it for Trevor Bauer right there. A disappointed Trevor Bauer walks off the mound here tonight. On the short end of the score, three to one, Seattle. As the Indians trail at three to one right now, stay tuned for Indians live after the ball game. Brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Kyle Crockett coming on to face James Jones with one out here in the seventh inning. Crockett making his eleventh appearance. Well, he did. He did a nice job tonight. I'll tell you. 
Nine hits. And he had the five punch outs. As you said, that third time you go through, a lot of times pitchers have a tougher time going through. He didn't. He got better as the game went along. And that's the first run that they were able to get before two were out. Which is a called strike. Crockett oh. delivers a strike. It's quickly 0 and 2 on James Jones. I don't know, Rick. What do you think? They're turning this thing upside down. Aren't they? <laughs> it's, I don't know. You've been drinking tonight? <laughs> it is Friday, right? <laughs> Jones is swinging a miss. He strikes out. Gomes completes the out two away. And that is. What board is that on? <laughs> Katie's not upside down. She's right side up. She's got more on Kyle Crockett. Well, guys, you've heard Terry Francona say that Kyle Crockett's stuff plays well at any level. A big reason for that is his deception. Mickey Calloway said pay attention to his delivery at the beginning. He's very slow and deliberate, and then once he gets going towards home plate, he speeds it up, making it really hard for the hitter to time him or specifically, guys, his arm action. Interesting. Well, and a lot of it is deception. You know, nowadays you don't see a whole lot of pitchers. Watch how he starts it out slow, starts it out slow, comes up, now he comes at you. And it's just maybe tough to pick up the baseball where it's coming from. And see where it goes all the way down. down. Yeah. But you know, nowadays the pitchers don't have deceptions like they used to. Robinson Cano for four on the night. But the Mariners get a big home run from Andy Chavez. And they lead it three to one. of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night takes place Thursday, July 10th. That'll be the Yankees in town, a four-game series. And it's Dollar Dogs all night long. Visit Indians.com for your ticket details. Yoervis Medina on for the 33rd time this year. 4-1 on the 248 earn run average. He's taken over that setup role for Fernando Rodney. He's given up one run in his last 17 games, during which time he has struck out 18 batters. We've been saying that about everybody coming on out of that bullpen. But the Indians are going to have to find a way to break through here. Only four hits on the night. All those off starter Chris Young. 
And two of those hits coming off the bat of Michael Bourne. So there's Dribble Cabrera, Michael Brantley, and Carlos Santana for the Indians here in the eighth. It was a little bit out in front of that one. I like the thought, though, he was going to jump on that first pitch. But just a tick too early with it. Well, that's what happens. You go out there and you try to pull a ball, and he did. He pulled it right down into his foot. Off the top of it. Thank God he had that pad on there. Still has to hurt. Routine bouncer to second. One away. Let's go back and uh, revisit that catch that Michael Brantley would eventually turn into a double play on the Wendy slow mo replay. It was not going to be a home run. No, it wasn't. He knew he was getting close to the fence. You know, and he just puts it away, but then he looks up. You hit your cutoff man, and he was able. To turn it into a double play because of the base running of Morrison. I'm wondering too now that I, I now that I've had time to look at that from a couple different angles. I wonder if from Morgan's perspective down on the field, if when Brantley jumped in his eye, he thought that's over. It's going to be over the fence, which is why he was running towards second base when Michael made the catch, and then had to slam on the. I'm sure it was. Back. I'm sure it was that he thought it might have been off the wall, but. Still in turn. Still bad base running play. Yeah. yeah. If it goes over the fence, you can trot home. Yeah. So there's really no need to do it. But that's neither here nor there. That's a thing of the past. They still have a three to one lead. And the Indians are running out of outs. Chopper to first. No flick. Oh, it was close. But Medina just did beat him two away. Yeah, you know, the Indians had their own base running adventure or misadventure. And again, I it's hard to fault Nick Swisher because he's hustling but on the error that allowed Michael Bourne to reach in that seventh inning Swisher was around second and he tried to get to third and he's thrown out there to end the inning if he just holds at second base now you got two on and two out and maybe the pressure goes back to the Seattle side with this dribble Cabrera well, coming up but here's my thought on that as he's running, he took a peek and he's expecting that first baseman to catch a ball and he's trying to get in scoring position. By the time he looked, Morrison missed the ball, so he really didn't stop. You can't fault him. He was hustling all the way. Yeah. If Morrison makes that play, he's going to try to flip at the first base. Swish, he wouldn't have got, uh, I don't think, born, and he would have been on third base. It would have turned out to be good. But when he booted the ball, that was his only play and it saved him. Isn't that the way it goes? That's how it's gone. Swisher, first time up, tries to get a base hit up the middle, hits a pitcher, falls down. That's just the way it's going for him right now. And Seattle, who's been the best in the league defensively this year, even when they make a mistake, it turns out all right. Uh, yes. That's how it worked out today. It's in the dirt, and it got more of Zanino than anything. Taking a look down on his arm, saying, Let me see the seams. He didn't catch it, it caught him. One and two to count on Santana, who's been quiet tonight, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. Up 
high and a full count. If Santana reaches, Jason Kipnis would be next. Come to the plate here in the eighth inning. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al. All right, thanks, Al. We got a pitching change here in Seattle. Lloyd McLennan's going to go to his lone left-hander left in the bullpen. Charlie Furbush will be coming on to face Jason Kipnis, who is the tying run at the plate when we come back. Hey, don't forget the uh, All-Star Game is coming up July 15th in Minneapolis at Target Field. Coverage begins at 4.30 on Fox Sports 1, followed by the All-Star Game itself at 7.30 only on Fox. Here in Seattle, two down in the eighth inning. The Indians will have the tying run at the plate. Jason Kipnis, he'll be facing Charlie Furbush. And Charlie this year... Leads the team in appearances. This will be his 34th. He's uh, 12th in the league in holds with 10. And he's given up just two runs in his last 19 games. Well, he's here and uh, McClendon's hoping he has one guy to face, the left-hander, and gets out of it. Because they've got their closer up getting loose. There's a couple of left-handers on, Gibnes and Chisenhall. They've matched up well to this point. Indians still don't have a hit since the one out double by Michael Bourne in the fifth. But they have had a couple of base runners, a couple of walks. They only have still the four hits in the ballgame. A little bit outside. 2 0. Oh. I mean, this is something Seattle fans are familiar with. Defense. That's how their Seahawks won the Super Bowl, and that's how the Mariners are making it work so far this year. Kipnis rips it deep right field. That's going to drop. That'll go to the wall. Santana out second on his way to third. He'll be held there. And 
now the Indians have the tying run in scoring position with two outs as Jason Kipnis delivers with his second double of the night. Well, this will be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. It's their fourth double, and Kipnis starting to, as we told you earlier, pick up the extra base. He went down and dug that ball out, down and in, into the corner. So after the two out walk, a two out double, all they need now is a single. And they can tie this ball game up. Well, Lonnie Chisinau is one for three on the night. He flared a double to left back in the fourth inning. Ah! And he looks for the strike. Bush gets ahead 0 oh and 2. Pretty good breaking ball. He was able to get uh, Lonnie to chase after. Probably see another one of those coming right here. I think he got away with yeah, one right he there. Did. He did. You see his catcher Zanino saying, get it down. He had one to hit, but when you have two strikes, and you, well, look at that. That Ooh. was middle of the plate. He had a good one to hit there, but he got away with one. Jason Kipnis at the bottom of your screen representing the tying run for Cleveland. And the 0-2 to Chisholm. Play. Trying to throw a fastball by him to get him off the breaking ball. Maybe he can leave another breaking ball up out over the plate. There's a lot of right center field for Lonnie if he hangs him one. And the two strike pitch. Zanino wanted it down. It's a grounder to second, and Cano throws him out. The Indians lead two in scoring position, and they still trail it by two. lead it bottom of the eighth inning here at Safeco all the fans are starting to fill in back behind home plate to get a better view of the fireworks so the, the left field bleachers are starting to clear out a little bit 
Remember, stay tuned for Indians Live, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming up after the game. Kyle Seeger, Logan Morrison, and Mike Zanino. For Seattle here in the bottom of the eighth. Kyle Crockett delivers a strike. Crockett got the last two outs of the seventh inning. Benny Pistano is up in the tribe bullpen. This is Nick Hagedon. Well, the only right handed hitter they had in the lineup tonight was Mike Zanino. All the rest have been left handers and natural left handers as you mentioned right on the at the outset. Yeah. Not that they're switch hitters. So maybe Crockett will get the first two and he'll bring in the righty. I don't know. Seager's trying to beat the shift. Why yeah. not? He beats the Indians a lot. And this guy can swing it against the tribe. But you see he's down 0 2 so he is trying to just shoot it that way. Well, there have been some low scoring games. Arizona beat San Diego 2 to 1. St. Louis leads the Dodgers in the ninth 3 to 1. Houston, as Al told us earlier, beat Detroit 4 to 3. Pittsburgh beat the Mets 3 to 2. And the right field, the base hit. How do you like that? This guy. That's a pretty good at bat. He's got a magic wand against the tribe, his third hit of the night. Well, he waited and waited enough, and he got himself a breaking ball that he could handle. Called off a couple of good pitches, and then this one was down. That was not a bad pitch from Crockett. Look at him. He goes down and gets it and picks it up and pulls it into right field. So his uh, luck against the Indians continues, but this guy, he, he just loves to face the Indians. And. He likes hitting here. 353 now on the year, hitting at home. And the leadoff man aboard. Now Logan Morrison, one for three on the night. That is now the tenth hit in the game for Seattle. We gave you that stat earlier. When the Mariners pile up 10 or more hits, they are practically unbeatable. That was uh, part of the keys to victory, wasn't it? Keep yeah. them under 10. Didn't work out real well, at least to this point it has not. That's the 12th game this month for Seattle with 10 hits or more. And they've gone 
10 and 1 oh, this month. That's why they've had they such 10. a good June. Yeah. I mean, you go with the, you know, the 10 hits. 10 hits is one thing, but if they can put three runs up, their pitching has been that good. Inside, he missed 2 and 1. If they hold on, they'd be 11 and 1, right? Uh, with this yeah. game. Yep, gotcha. Base hit left center field. Seeger around second. He's on his way to third, and he'll go in there standing. Boy, Morrison, second time tonight, he has just served the ball to left center field by staying behind it. He talked about that staying behind the ball, something they really worked on while he was down and rehabbing from the strain hamstring. Now Terry Francona going to come out and make a pitching change as we look back at the Akron Children's Hospital keys to the game. Indians unable to keep the Mariners below the 10 hit mark. And look at that on the year 23 and 4, 10 and 1 this month. And the Indians have not been able to generate anything offensively. Timeout, we'll be right back. Eighth inning, replaced now by Vinny Pistano as we take a look at our in-game box score brought to you by your Hyundai dealers. Chavez, the unlikely power source with the solo home run that made it a 3-1 Mariners lead. Seattle hasn't done a whole lot with their 11 hits to this point, but they got a chance now to pad the lead, and it's up to Vinny Pistano to try and keep that from happening. The Indians will bring the infield in. As Mike Zanino steps in, he's 0 for 3 tonight, but has good power. He's hit 11 home runs this year. And he almost hit one out of here back in the fourth inning. He sent Michael Brantley to the base of the wall. Brantley jumped up and made the catch. Yeah, and he's been on a tear, too, when you talk about the home run ball. Four has homered in four of his last five games. Popped him up on the infield. Oh, this is good for Pistano. Jason Kipnis makes the catch one away. And Terry Francona looks like he's only going to have Pistano face one batter. He's going to go back to his bullpen for a matchup here. Hagadon was up. Yep. So Pistano throws one pitch. Gets one out. And now Nick Hagedon will be coming on to face the left-handed hitting Michael Saunders.
the corner. Well, that was a stolen base that ended up paying dividends because they got a two out base hit. So they were able to get the hits when needed. And then a little wild pitch where a runner advance. Saunders goes into scoring position and then another two out base hit. They've been able to get the hits with runners in the scoring position. The Indians cannot. Nick Hagedon is a local pitching here in Seattle. He grew up in the Seattle area, went to Sumner High School, pitched at the University of Washington, was actually drafted by the Mariners. But that was coming out of high school, and he did not sign, went on to college. Popped him up. Lonnie Chisholm, foul territory. How do you like that? Two pitches, two pop-up outs. <laughs> Vinny Pistano made one pitch to pop up Zanino on the infield. Tag it on one pitch, pops up Saunders. Now with two down, the infield backs up. And Dustin Ackley, the hitter. But Rick, this is where the Mariners have been their most dangerous yeah, tonight. Yeah, yep, the two hits we just showed, you're both coming with two outs. Well, this would be very good for the Indians if they can get out here without allowing a run here and keep it a three to one ball game. They've got their work cut out for them to face their closer. Dustin Ackley. I didn't figure he'd swing at the first pitch. He walked earlier twice in the ball game. No, when the next two guys in front of you make outs on first pitches. You better take one. Pop back out of play. When Nick Hagedon was drafted eventually by the Boston Red Sox back in 2007, they took him with the 55th overall pick. That was the fourth highest selection ever for a player out of the University of Washington. In the end, left field, Michael Brantley makes the grab. Nick Hagedon does a great job to get out of the jam. And we'll go to the ninth. 3-1 Seattle. For the tribe, and it's Fernando Rodney time here at Safeco Field. Rodney will be facing the bottom third of the Indians' order. He has 21 saves on the year, a couple of blown. 30 in the third innings, only 11 walks, 35 strikeouts. What's interesting, Rick, 
and it's nothing new because we watched him for years you know, with the uh, Detroit Tigers. Right. He Tampa doesn't have Bay. a lot of clean innings. Right. He'll give you at least an opportunity. He's given up at least one base runner in 14 of his 23 save situations. He's a guy that's a two-pitch guy. He's a good fastball, great changeup. Now, usually he has one of the two pitches. You know, if he has both of them on that given night, it's going to be a clean inning. But like you say, sometimes he can't throw his fastball for strikes, and it'll rely just on the changeup. And the other times we see him, if he can't throw his changeup for a strike, will he throw enough fastballs? But he can certainly walk a couple of guys. But it's one of those two. It's a 50-50 guess. Is it a fastball or a changeup? Rodney out of the Dominican Republic. Pitched a long time with the Tigers, a couple of years with the Angels, a couple of years with Tampa. Signing here as a free agent this past offseason. He, he has a tendency to, to rub some opponents the wrong way. He's got the hat cocked sideways at the end of every save. If he completes it, he'll shoot the bow and arrow. <laughs> but Rick Waits, his pitching coach, said he said, you know what, when he's on your side, you'll love him, though. Well, that's the thing. I mean, when, when he pitches for you, you love him. When he's against it, you hate him. There's a lot of guys like that in this game. First pitch to Jan Gomes is a fastball for a strike. Yeah, there you go. There's the first fastball for a strike. Get ahead. But he has a devastating changeup. So there, there it is. is. Wow. And you know, you can only pick one of those pitches to hit. You can't sit on, you know. Okay, I'm looking for the fastball and react to the changeup. You almost got to spit on the fastball and hope you get the changeup. But that pitch was out of the zone, but it's so good. Way outside. And that, I think the reason why he gives up so many base runners is that we have seen in the past, if he can't command his fastball, he may end up walking a guy or two. You know, and yeah. then you mix one in. Uh, we we've, we've seen him at times. We've had uh, been able to get to him before. Gomes run up with a fastball at the knees. That was a perfect pitch. Well, you look at it, and you know, that Bugs Bunny changeup that he has, uh, you can't sit on both. And Gomes looks at the fastball and says, "See ya." So he took two fastballs and he swung at the one changeup. He threw him away. That was out of the zone. Now Nick Swisher 0 for 2 walked his last time up. Changeup. 82 mile an hour changeup and he gets the fastball up to 95. So there you talk about the variance or the difference in speeds. But you spot him that first changeup, no big deal. Ninety-six and it was letter high. Swisher got on that high pitch. 97 mile an hour fastball. And he lines it into right field. And the Indians will bring the tying run to the plate here in the ninth. And again, yeah. as we said I'll with Rodney, you you'll get some opportunities. That's a good job of hitting by Swish. He did get on top of that fastball. 0 2. He thought he was going to run one by him, maybe thinking he was looking for change. But Swish got on top of it and gets a base hit. So that brings the tying run to the plate now. David Murphy 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. The only run for the Indians tonight. Slowly chopped towards second. Cano can't get Swisher. They'll retire Murphy. Two down. Cano just 
kind of offered the glove out yeah, there. Yeah, well, you know what? He, he wasn't going to get him because it was by him. Swish is going to go away from him. He had to come in. Get the out. You got a two-run lead. So it was the right thing to do. He thought he was going to be able to touch him, but with his momentum coming in, get the out at first. Michael Bourne trying to keep it alive for the Indians. He is two for four tonight with a single and a double. And a first pitch change up at 81 miles an hour. Swisher at second base, but it's the tying run at the plate for Cleveland. Bourne lines it to right field. That's a base hit. Swisher's going to come around and score. Bourne's on his way to second base. Jams on the brakes. Goes back to first. Oh, I'll tell you what. That's a terrific job by Michael Saunders, the right fielder, because if Bourne gets into scoring position, then a lot more pressure is on Rodney. Yeah, well, that, you know what? The score dictated him oh, not going. And he ended up putting on the brakes. He wanted to, but you just can't make that out at second base. He stayed back enough and hit this ball off the end of the bat. Michael certainly thought about getting himself in scoring position. He rounded it. He was a third of the way there and then put on the brakes. Saunders with a good arm. You just can't, you can't make the out there. So the score dictated. He had to hold up. Now well, here again, the Indians fighting hard to the final out. There's Dribble Cabrera. Leans back with the fastball in for a strike. That's the. That's tantamount to a get me over fastball for Rodney at 93. He normally dials it up above the mid 90s. And Cabrera fouls it back at 95 and it's 0 and 2. Well, he had Swisher 0 and 2 and Swisher got a base hit. Got up on a fastball. This is where Bourne, if you can pick a pitch and pick a changeup, this may be a time. But this would be a great time for them to throw a high fastball just in case Bourne does try to steal a base. Just missed inside. The crowd wanted it. Many of which on their feet. Yeah, he went inside with it, too. And, boy, that locked him up. That was just in off the dish. Now would be the time to run, I think, if you're born. I think he's going to come back with a change up here. And it all depends. That outfield is so deep. It would be so much easier if you could get yourself in scoring position. Popped him up. Change up. And Miller makes the catch. And the Indians fall in the series opener by a final score of three to two. Rodney gets his 22nd save. And Chris Young, who only went five, it was a true five and fly tonight. But he gets the win thanks to that.